don't do half ass. We let our work speak for us. You don't get the best by sitting on the sidelines watching other people take reps. You get the best by getting your ass in the game and playing till the whistle. Welcome to the Blue Collar Barbarians podcast, brought to you by the Blue Collar Barbarians Network, your source for all things savage. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with episode one, and I can't tell you how excited I am to be here with you today. I want to say thank you for your time and your attention this morning, and I want to say thank you for being here and being a part of this show and this network and this community as we grow. It's going to be really, really cool to watch us all accomplish our dreams and get our shit done. It's going to be awesome. That being said, I don't want to just give you guys a bunch of trash, so I'm coming in episode one. We're coming right out of the gate. We're going to hit you in the head with five things you can do on the job site to stand out immediately. We're going to talk about these five items that we've come together as a team and agreed on that are five simple things that you could do right now to start standing out little changes just it's time it's time to elevate right let's make money now not later let's get better let's make ourselves more valuable right here we go five things on the job site that you can change immediately number one your attitude attitude is everything it's also contagious if you're that guy that's walking around the job site with like a chip on your shoulder or like the world owes you something you're poison i'm sorry to say it i'm just gonna call it spade a spade i've been that person again i'm not better than you i'm no different than you i've been that man but if your attitude is crap you're poison thankfully that's something we can change <laughs> thankfully that's something that we can come together we can work on collectively with a little bit of intentional thought a little bit of intention before action change your attitudes folks you come into work every day and you start showing up and you start acting like you're happy to be there you're interested in the work that you're doing you're interested in your coworkers. you're interested in building the building or farming or whatever it is that you're doing it's not going to go unnoticed people are going to want to know what is it about you what's different about you today man you're smiling more what's going on with that the smile is contagious you can't lie to me how many times you've been around somebody and somebody's smiling at you and you don't even know why they're smiling you find you catch yourself smiling back at them like what are you doing goof Ball. it's everywhere your attitude that's the easiest thing to change wake up in the morning excited to go and be a barbarian wake up in the morning excited for the opportunity to crush it wake up in the morning excited and optimistic about your goals and your dreams and about how this that you're working the plan and you're doing these things you're making forward progress you're fighting forward as we would say in the military attitude is everything and if you have a good attitude i can promise you your leadership and your supervision not only will they appreciate that but they will take note number two timeliness mm, ain't that a tricky one <laughs> you see i grew up trying to be very very punctual 15 minutes early or you're late if you're on time you're late right you guys know the old stupid saying but as i've watched in today's world that's changed people walk in the gate two minutes before their shift starts with their boots untied or their tennis shoes still on people come to the to the morning stretch and flex as you will or whatever the goofball crap is and they got to go back to their vehicle to get their tools or their crap together or their lunch pail or their whatever their energy drink they left in their cup holder when you get done with your morning meeting it's time to get to work people it's not time to come up with other things timeliness is everything where do companies make their money in the schedule where do superintendents and leadership see bonuses and other structured like that for being ahead of schedule or on time on schedule maybe completing a job early does any of that ring a bell how can you complete a job or be ahead of schedule if you can't show up on time or when you do show up you show up with a shit attitude hmm yeah saying this i'm guilty of it too how am i gonna get paid half an hour for climb time and then climb five minutes before it's my shift i mean if it makes sense right to a point but then at the same time if they were to ask me about that how can i argue with them why are we paying you for something that you're not doing timeliness folks timeliness is key and i want to take this a step further with you this morning okay you need to do your job in a timely manner okay this Taking two hours to nail 16 foot of two by four down and take a couple measurements, it's trash. Taking 25 minutes to go get a bag of bolts or a bucket of bolts, trash. Going to coffee or cigarette breaks every 15 minutes, trash. This is the accountability portion. How are we supposed to ask these people or tell these people we're worth more money or we need more money, but we can't even come correct. We can't even do our job to its to its full description without needing a pat on the back or a good job or a 
phone or, I mean, get the hell out of here with that crap, people. This is, like I said, the accountability portion where we got to start to have that conversation with ourselves. If I think I'm worth a million dollars, then I better show up to work like I like I know I'm worth that million dollars, right? I can't show up with a $25 budget thinking I got a million dollar attitude. That doesn't make sense. So you got to fix yourself before you can go to these companies and ask them to fix the shit that they're unsat on. And I know that makes sense to a lot of you. And again, I'm not different. This is not a lecture. This is not a judgment. Talking through shit that I got to work on too. That my team's got to work on. Timeliness. Timeliness is everything, ladies and gentlemen. If you make that change, I can promise you people are going to take notice. And your leadership especially is going to take notice because you're affecting their pocketbook. Every time you're late, somebody notices. They might make little jokes. They might say something. They poke at you, but they notice. You think because the general foreman goes out there and shakes your hand and jokes around with you or talks trash with you for two minutes that they weren't in that office as a superintendent or with the superintendent just a second ago talking about who's on time today and who's not. Quit joking yourself. The real killers are watching at all times. And I'm here to tell you that fake shit, it ain't going to make it. Not today. Not today. So start showing up on time. Start doing your job in a timely manner. Start being timely and intentional with your work and with your breaks. Just get better. Number three, separate personal life from work life. Oh man, is this a tricky one for me? See, if you're like this big dude right here, you're a social butterfly and you probably struggle with talking to every person under the sun that wants to chat with you about freedom, America, guns, ammo, you know, all the barbaric shit. Yep. If you're like anything like me, it can be a tricky one to separate your personal life from your work life. But professionally speaking, it's good to have secrets. It's good that people don't know everything about you. It is not their right. It's not their need. It has no place. You're not there to become BFFs and hold hands and compare and contrast tales of snowboarding and sports and living back in high school 25 years later. That's not what you're here for. You're here to make money, to put bread on the table, to chase your dreams, to build that house, to buy that property, that farmland, to go on that hunt, to go buy that four-wheeler, that truck, that Ferrari. That's what you're there for. You're there to stack that bread. Bread. I'm not there to talk about my favorite shoes are Nike. I'm not here to tell you about my favorite color is red and oh dude, I got the money to buy a new Corvette next week or I got I'm gonna go buy a new truck or hey, did you guys see the movie Predator? Oh, did you hear about what's going on in Hollywood? You're not there for that shit. You're there to build a building. You're there to put in work. You guys got to start learning. We got to start learning to do our damn job first and to keep it separate. Now, I'm not saying don't laugh and have good, enjoy small talk and do all that. No, I'm not saying that. You got you to have fun. But you need to separate your personal life. These guys don't need to know everything you do. You do that enough on social media. Let's be real. We're all guilty of it. They don't need to know that. Keep it professional. Keep it personal, okay? What you do outside of the job site, that's not their place. If you don't hang out with them in person, if you don't hang out with them like in front of your family, then they don't need to know about all that stuff. They don't need to know that you went and caught a gopher snake or went python hunter, whatever the hell you did. They don't need to know about all of that, what you're doing. Keep it fun, but keep it separate. And while we're talking about this, don't bring home to work. And don't bring work home. Your family deserves more than that. You think your wife wants to listen to you talk about what you talked to Johnny next to you about for the last eight hours of your day? No. She wants to She wants to hear about your day as like, hey, how was your day as a whole? Not tell me every step, not have the same conversation you just had with your friends. Be home and be present with me now. Enjoy this. Have a real life outside of work. Have an existence somewhere else and an identity in something else other than what I do for a living. Make the job. Don't let the job make you. And also, on the flip side of that, when you show up, you're fighting with your wife or your dog bit you or shit on your couch or whatever it did. That's not their problem. That doesn't affect what you're supposed to do to make money. Let it go. Don't bring that to work with you. Don't plug that airspace. Don't plug any of that crap. Church and state, separate them. Number four, and this is probably the easiest suggestion that I can offer you. Stop walking by trash. What do I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen? What do I mean by stop walking by trash? Well, if I'm to be honest with you, it's simply just that. Stop walking by 
garbage. We're all guilty of this. We walk by every day. We walk by. We'll see people. They'll throw something at the dumpster. It won't make it the full route. And we just walk on by. We keep going. That is disgusting. That is lazy. And that is undisciplined. And it stands out. It stands out. It's called taking pride, people. Taking pride in yourself. You don't walk by garbage. You go over to that dumpster. You go by that trash can. You see shit on the ground. You pick it up and you throw it in there. You help those losers that couldn't figure out how to score a 16-inch circle with a with a ball of paper you help them out not everybody knows two plus two and that's okay we can help them let's make this matter i want to talk about this trash thing a little bit more in depth too because i want to tell you something that i think that people notice that that are things that happen i should say more than more than you would know it might not be the first time you pick up that piece of trash it might not be the second it might not be the hundredth it might not be the one thousand it might take ten thousand hours it might take ten thousand days it might take 10 days it might take 10 years i don't care but one thing i can promise you is that if you continue that little discipline of picking up trash rather than just walking by it people are going to notice your superintendents your leadership whatever that title may be they will notice you can't miss something like that it may not appear to you initially but it's subconsciously always there always so start picking up trash because you know what you're going to become that guy that to your boss and amongst your coworkers has a little bit more discipline and a sharper edge. And the idea here, folks, is to sharpen your sword so that you could have the most fitting, most fierce leading edge possible as you go into the workplace to crush whatever stands in front of you and everything you've ever <laughs> dreamed of. And that's the barbaric part of it. So as simple as it is, start picking up your trash and other people's trash. And take a little bit of pride, and we can win that way too. I think I've beat that horse enough. And if that's you and you're a litter bug, I hope somebody smacks your ass one time. Number five, personal hygiene and dress for the job. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you that there is nothing more aggravating than smelling your stinky B.O. ass for eight hours a day. Go home, put deodorant on. Again, take a little bit of pride in yourself. Come to work ready. Come to work confident. Come to work like you're ready to be there or like you're interested in being there. Don't come to work smelling like you just rolled out of bed 10 minutes ago. You still got beer on your breath from last night because you have no respect for yourself or no boundaries. Don't give people that easy chip. Don't give them that preconception about you. Take a little bit of pride, brush your teeth, put some deodorant on, spray a little cologne. Oh, don't wear a cologne on the job site. Why? Because I got my swag. I feel good. It's confidence. Wear that cologne. Whatever it's got to take to get that mental game up, right? To make you feel like you walk with a little bit of authority in your own head, a little bit of right, like you're meant to be here on this earth, not just exist in it. Personal hygiene. You guys have to start caring about yourself if you want somebody else to care about you respect yourself first and dressing for the job i don't know how many times i see people roll up covered in grease and grime and grit and i understand we work dirty jobs i work construction with you guys i understand but there's no excuse to be wearing the same clothes for two weeks or 10 days or to come into work with your hoodie dripping wet in oil or saturated in alcohol and cigarette smell dress for success dress for the job dress for the job you want. If I wanna move up and make more money, I need to look like I'm ready to do that to the gatekeepers that have the keys to let me through that door. If I show up like a schmuck, I'm just delaying and possibly creating a situation where that no longer is a possibility for me. These gatekeepers, they might try to act like, oh no, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. That's not true. That's not true, folks. Take a look around you, evaluate your circles, evaluate your friends groups, evaluate your coworkers, and you watch. As you start to take inventory and you pay attention, those killers, my barbarians out there, they're doing something a little bit different. They're dressed with a little bit of pride. They're walking a little bit taller, coming into work smelling good. They're not smelling like reeking like booze. They're not hung over all the time. They're not going out smoking weed on their lunch break 24 seven. They're here to do a job. They're here to make money. They're in, they're out, rinse, wash, repeat. And the real oh, no. killers, they're in, they're out. They're building their own thing, rinse, repeat. We're in, we're out, we're building our own thing, rinse, repeat. Stop wasting this precious thing we have called life and the limited opportunity that we have to crush it, to experience it for what it really is. I don't know about you guys out there, you other barbarians out there, I don't know about you, but I, I think about those guys that are flying on those private jets to go have lunch in Chicago, in Vegas, in New York. I think about those guys that don't wait in airport lines, that get a private car to shuttle them, get on their jet, and go to wherever the hell they need to go. Man, 
Being two hours from anywhere would be pretty sick, right? Anywhere in the country. A lot of you can't even imagine that, though. We don't know that world. We don't know that that exists. We're not even cognitive of it. It's time to wake up. It's time to come to life. It's time to be a real fucking barbarian. And to realize that all those things that you don't think about exist for you, too. And not only do they exist for you, but they're inherently yours. If you're hungry enough. If you're driven. If you're willing to work. If you're willing to do what you really are meant to do. And although that was our five, I have a bonus one for you. Let your work speak for you. Let your work speak for you. I can't tell you how many times I see people in general do stuff half-ass. They don't take any ownership. They point fingers. They miss things. We all do. But they're not taking any kind of pride in their work. And if their work spoke for them, they would say, I'm a sucker. If their work spoke for them, they would say, I'm not worth what you pay me currently. If their work spoke for them, it would say, cancel this mother effer. He ain't with it. You're not even serious about it. You can't even follow details. You got a plan laid out in front of you and you're still trying to freestyle. It's time that you let your work speak for who you are. And that is everything great. You were created to be a monster of good, to be able to go out there and get whatever the hell that is, whatever it is you want. But you're showing people that you're doing that on a 99 cent budget, by the way, that your work is. Now, how the hell am I gonna get a jet when I come to work and I'm putting quarters on the table? I should be slapping stacks of hundies right here. That's what my work should be. You see this phone? $1,200. Slap that thing down. That's a brick of money. You know why? Because that's my work. Everything I touch, my stickers, boom. Count that as a stack of hundreds too. Why? Because I take pride in that. That's my best work every time I every time I put something out. Why is this show being recorded in a studio right now? Hmm. Why are we not just sitting in a garage shooting the shit with the homies? Because it's our best foot forward. We don't do half-ass. We let our work speak for us. We show up and we're ready to be professionals. We show up and we're ready to make that money. We show up and we're ready to show you why you're not paying me enough money and you're going to lose me if you don't get with it. I'm going to let my work say that, though. You don't get the best by sitting on the sidelines watching other people take reps. You get the best by getting your ass in the game and playing till the whistle. And a lot of us ain't doing that. I want to help you. I am with you. We ain't paid enough. Why are companies 4X in? Why are companies 4X in and we're making union minimum wage? Or we're making a couple bucks an hour, we're making $25 an hour and a company of 4X? It doesn't even make sense. It's time we show up like we know what we are doing. And to put a pin in this for you, I want to see you go to your boss and say, hey man, I appreciate everything you've done for me. This opportunity to grow, this leadership, all of this. I love it. I love it all. But I just got a bigger offer. And if you can't match that, this is the, what I think is the best opportunity for my for my family. I want you to be able to come and go and look at your boss and say like, hey, or I want to be able to go to your boss and say, hey, this kid needs more money. You ain't paying him right. You see all he's doing? Undeniable proof. Stacks of evidence. He did this. He picked up all that trash. He built this in this amount of time. He did this. He did, you name it. Plowed the field and a record time he washed the tractor after he was done and we never told him to do that i mean th these little things matter if you want to be worth money you got to be worth money so stop sitting on your ass and stop doing a half-assed job and let's get to work for real because we need to be able to have this conversation with ourselves first so that we can look across this table or when i look across this table and i say hey operations manager can you please explain to me why your company 5x and why you're making 400k a year or whatever you're making but your people are making 60 and they're the ones performing all the work we can't do that if we ain't right so let's get right because i want you to win i want you to succeed and I want you to have all the things, all of them. So let's get right first. In conclusion, the five things and the bonus. Attitude, timeliness, separate your personal life from your work life, stop walking by trash, personal hygiene, and letting your work speak for you. Letting your work speak for you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now that we just dropped this 15 minutes of quick things that you can do to stand out on the job site, I hope this will just start that ball rolling in your mind. It will get that thing thinking about what you're capable of because I'm here to tell you that you're capable of greatness and you deserve it. It's your damn right. You were created for it and I want to see you go get it. So let's do these five things, these six things. Let's start implementing these things and let's see what happens. Let's start this process of leveling up today with urgency let's win people